Facebook. Hey, Facebook. Um, don't forget to donate um, at our Patreon. We don't have that. We don't have that. We don't have that. <laughs> we definitely don't have that because this is Air ninety point three WMCF Montclair. This is the morning buzz, Let's and all I gotta say is, I am very, very, very angry this morning. Tell them, Cam. Okay, so boom, right? I tried to return a book from the university bookstore when it was due on May 12th. I tried to return it on May 12th. What happened? They did the line was long and they closed on right, whatever. I was gonna come back tomorrow. They were closed. Okay, that's 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 valid. The 14th closed, 15th closed, 16th closed, 17th closed, 18th. I was I was out doing my track things. Hmm. Got back the 20th, close. 21st, take a guess, close. So I'm like, all right, they don't want this, they don't want this thinking thing, whatever. I try to call them, I try to do everything, I try to contact them any way, any way possible. You know what yes, happens? Sir. You know what happens? What? Not only, not only do they say, okay, it's, it's cool, whatever. But on top of that, this morning I wake up. To a seventy dollars charge from the university bookstore. Seventy whole dollars. Seventy dollars. Seventy bitcoin. No, 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 no. Seventy dollars. Seventy U.S. dollars. Ugh. Oh, I'm gonna. Oh no. Mind you, I just, I need money badly, because I have negative twelve dollars in my bank account right now because of that bookstore charge. Oh my god. The amount of things I want to say, but I can't because you know radio. <laughs> Listen, today's L of the day is definitely going to Montclair State's bookstore. For one, their ridiculous service, because not being open for that long is absurd, especially considering you still have students on campus t- taking summer classes. There should be some kind of like, we're open every Wednesday or we're open every other day. Like, there's no reason why everything needs to shut down during the summer. The website says it's open. All- it's I looked at the website multiple times too, but prior to you know even walking on campus, it said it was open at nine a.m. I'm like, all right, cool, nine a.m. I can do mm-hmm. that over the summer. Nine a.m. That's 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 like that's you know that's that's typical wake up time. Cool. Yeah. I try to go there. What happens? They just, they just, I'm like, bro, this is this is ridiculous. No, I mean they definitely. Um, here's the thing about Montclair State's bookstore as well is that not only are they um very bad at their job, but secondly. Um, everything there is like a thousand dollars for no reason. Like yeah. nothing needs to be that expensive. Once maybe, again, no, maybe I'm the computer. Gonna... Maybe maybe the computers. That's that's about it. Oh, okay. That's I will it. say. I found, I found books cheaper on Amazon. Oh, every time. Exactly. Every time. Like what, what what am I doing? Am I paying? What am I paying an arm and a leg to get a book for math mm-hmm. class for? And I say this on on here every now and then, just in hopes that Montclair will send me a nice package of of free merch. But I have been here. This is going to be my last semester in the fall. uh, End of an era. It's great. It's exciting. Regardless, I do not own a single piece of Montclair State apparel. Not one. Because it's so expensive. Now, I'll probably give into it in my last semester because I'll never probably be in an area to buy a Montclair State anything again so i'll probably buy something at a ridiculous price regret it at first and then i'll be like oh i guess it was worth it because i did go here for four years but regardless of montclair state bookstore your service is terrible you're doing cam dirty you've probably done others dirty and you're way too expensive and lastly you're hidden and barely anyone knows about you sometimes therefore the elder day goes to montclair state bookstore couldn't say it better myself but per use, we have a great show for you. <laughs> but before we even start any of that off, Lana, can you give us a newscast? Of course, Cam. And I'm sorry about your bookstore troubles. But... Oh, it, it's, it's fine. It's fine. I'm wait, 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 to... wait. Hold on. I remember one person who has bought in with the most ridiculous item from the bookstore, and she is here with us today. It is you, Lana. What did you buy? You want to you oh, want to tell everyone what you bought, Alana? I don't remember. <laughs> you bought a winter coat from the bookstore. Oh yeah, for two hundred bucks. Whoa, 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 <laughs> what? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. It was a good I coat. had the same response, Cam. I was shocked. I was. 
My mom yeah, I don't know. Kara <laughs> has left the studio. Oh my um, gosh! <laughs> what? Uh, <laughs> it was a good call. I mean, overpriced, yes, but it was a good call. Overpriced? Of course it's overpriced. $20 <laughs> for a Colts? Are you kidding me? Sorry to put you on blast, Lana. My yes, bad, but I had to. Please to the news guy. Please to the news guy before I lose my mind. <laughs> hey, okay. I just want to say it. My mom let me do it, so. That's fair. But still, $20 is $20. That's crazy. Uh, now with the news. <laughs> In national news, a former Minneapolis police officer was released Monday from custody after three years behind bars. In 2017, Mohammed Noor shot a woman while responding to her 911 call. He was charged with third degree murder and manslaughter of Justine Ruzik, who was reporting on a potential sexual assault in the alley behind her house. Nor was initially sentenced to 12 years in prison, but Minnesota court vacated the third degree murder charge on the bounds of insufficient evidence to sustain it. He was then resentenced to four years and nine months. In state news, a 19 year old motorist was charged with a death by auto on Monday after a crash that killed a woman in February. Tyler Prophet was driving a Subaru Impreza at over 100 miles per hour heading southbound on Route 42 when his vehicle hit the woman, Hyundai Elantra, as she was trying to make a left turn. Prophet was also charged with endangering the welfare of a child. In local news on Sunday, Montclair residents gathered together to write letters to prisoners throughout the country. We quote, we want, what we want is that human connection, right? Said Maria Eva Gorgo, member of the Montclair Beyond Policing, who hosted the event. I mean, they are people, they have dreams, they have families, they are like us. Volunteers would ask prisoners about how they're being treated and what the conditions are like for them, in addition to telling them about their own day. Getting letters to the positive things, said Greg Passon, a community member and an activist. It shows that people know you're there. So even if we don't get the response back, you know, we're starting the process. So we're going to keep it and keep trying to make the connection just, as, just to humanize people. They're just people that want to communicate with you. Just talk and make your life a little easier. And I think that's a positive no matter what. And for the weather today, it is currently 64 degrees with a high of 81 and a low of 64 with a humidity level at 57 and good air quality at 28. We stand good air quality. You know what else we stand? We stand sports. Yes, sir. Hey. <clears throat> Of course, the world is on fire. And by fire, I mean it's a very, very small blaze at this point because sports is what we like to call the dead zone. And I will say this could have been a great time for sports because the World Cup is supposed to take place right now. But it's not because FIFA took some blood money from Qatar and now we have to wait until December, which I will say that's going to be exciting as well, though. Oh, wait, but here's the World Cup in the winter. On a Sunday, the final at 10 a.m. And then you get Sunday NFL football too. Oh, immediately after. What? Wait, I what? mean, that's a beautiful Sunday right back there. Back to back, back to back like that. <laughs> yes, sir. It's taking Wait, place what? in the morning World Cup final. We and get NFL got... in the afternoon at nighttime. It's gonna be a beautiful sports day. Whoever's working that Monday for us after a round of applause. Probably gonna be me. Who knows? Hey, who knows, Cam? <laughs> Once again, I never heard this conversation. Um, anyways, a lawsuit has been filed against the Houston Texans claiming the organization enabled Deshaun Watson's alleged acts of sexual assault and misconduct when he was with the team. In the least shocking news to hit the NBA in a hot minute, Kyrie Irving says he's opting in to a $36.5 million option with the Brooklyn Nuts, confirming the decision via The Athletic. The chances of Kyrie leaving Brooklyn were as high as the possibility of my dad coming back into my life, but the media went wild with this story and had some believing that the star guard was on his way to La La Land to reunite with LeBron. While I'm glad this storyline is over, I do wonder about the multiverse option where Kyrie, AD, Bron, and Westbrook are on the same team. I gotta be honest, that would be award-winning television right there. I love it. Now, in typical summer sports news, we have a battle... And what in the world is going on as Adrian Peterson and Le'Veon Bell have signed a contract for a heavyweight boxing exhibition 
on July 30th at Crypto.com Arena in Los Angeles. Stable Center. Yeah. The fight is bound to bring a lot of intrigue as people speculate which NFL running back could throw hands the best. And if you look at Adrian Peterson's track record, I'm sure Stop if Le'Veon Bell... Stop it. Stop well, it. Uh, okay. Stop All right. It. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I'm glad you got it and cut me off. Uh, Miami coming at Jaden Rashada. Refuted report linking him to a $9.5 million uh, NIL deal with the hurricane booster, John Ruiz. And he responds to this is, quote, any report regarding my commitment to the University of Miami is false unless I was interviewed directly. All reports of my decision involving an NIL deal is inaccurate. I would never make a life slash career choice for any monetary value. And now, Cam. What's up? That's all like the hard news of sports, but I think it's time. It's summer. Things are scorching hot in the summer, right? At least, you know, New Jersey will get there eventually, probably July. But probably probably next week. You know, even if you listen to sports radio, sports podcasts, it's like there's what are they talking about? They're doing hot takes right now, Cam. So I need to know do you have a hot take potentially for? an NFL MVP this year. Yes, I do. And my NFL MVP this year is none other than that guy in Los Angeles singing that thing, Justin Herbert. And here's why. Wow. Here's why. He one, he has the he's he's been in the system for this is this this is his what his third year in the league. So he yeah. one his 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 honest his uh, understanding for the game is, is already up there. Two his weapons, he still has he still has all his guys, so he still has good chemistry with his guys. Three, they just gonna they're just gonna get better from there. Four, the division he plays in is just way too overpowered, and I and that's my that's the team that's gonna win that division. So with all that, there's no shot that just there's no doubt Justin Herbert's gonna win MVP. No doubt. No doubt. Wow, that's crazy considering the man hasn't even made a playoff yet. Um exactly. Well, Cam, thank you. That is a scorching hot take, in my opinion. Listen, uh, when the NFL season's over and Justin Herbert is not MVP, I would like this. I would like this clip. Today's date is June 28th, 2022. <laughs> I would like this clip saved. You could, you could expose me. You can make fun of me for this. It's okay. I give you my consent this day. You could make you could clown me for this, but this is this is the right take. Justin Herbert's one MVP. That's all. Imagine he is like. Plays terrible, 17 interceptions in like three games. They bench him, trade for Baker Mayfield. It's just nightmare scenario for Cam. I would, I, I would. That'd be yeah. hilarious. Um, I root for chaos. Anyways, Cam, we have some more important things to talk about. What do we got? Yes, we do. Okay, so first off, this story absolutely blew my mind. So a Supreme, so the Supreme Court said Monday that a football coach, a high school football coach, who knelt and prayed on fields after games was protected by the Constitution. The decision made by the court has many believing that it would open, door, open the door to much more coercive prayers in public schools. The case forced justice, justices to wrestle with how to balance the religious and free, free speech rights of teachers and coaches. It also had to balance the students not to feel pressure in participating in some religious practices. Liberal justices in the minority said there's evidence that Bremen, Bremerton High School coach Joseph Kennedy's prayers at the 50-yard line had a coercive effect on students and allowed him to incorporate his quote, personal religious beliefs on, into a school event. Dissoning Justice Sonia, uh, Sonia Sotomayor wrote that the decision set us further down a perilous path in forcing states to entangle themselves with religion. But but the justice and the majority emphasized that the coach's player came after the game were, were over and at a time when he was not responsible for the students and was free to do other things. Two things. One, I do not ever agree with the Supreme Court, especially nowadays, but I agree with them on this one. And two, I plead the fifth to that last one. That last, uh, last thing that they said, I argue that last one. <clears throat> so mm. I played, so I played football at a public school and you know, we, we never had, we never had prayers because you know, my coach, my coach never wanted it. It just never seemed that way that we, we need to have prayers. But when the coach is talking, <clears throat> man, you, you know, you know, not to leave when the coach is talking because one, you never know that. Okay. 
what if he what if he goes on a tirade? You're gonna miss something. And that's the thing, coaches they talk forever. And if you were to leave, if you were to excuse excuse yourself right then and there, then they will paint you in negative light. So that right, th- so that's already that's forcing pressure on your your athletes right there. Two, um, I am like I don't. I'm not the most religious person in the world, but I'm not a not opposed to a a prayer at the like you know we we do we do team prayers anyway. Then, but that you know that's before the game. After the game, a lot you see you see teams you see a lot of NFL NFL guys do this. So I think they're just trying to incorporate that practice of okay, well you know we we played well. There's no you know we have forces we're fortunate enough to have to have any injuries, so we're just gonna pray that okay, well we're gonna see if you guys are able to. You know, get back, get back home safely. Get back to your family safely. So I, I see that aspect of prayer, but at the same token, you, you're you're kind of you're kind of forcing the hand of some students here, a little bit. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I will say to start off, um, for the most part, I I agree with this ruling, um, but I think it's important to understand why there's like a lot of people that were against this and. One of the main reasons is that a lot of people were saying, would the Supreme Court have voted six to three had it been like a Muslim coach and he was putting uh, out I've, like absolutely a, not. Exactly. Uh, absolutely so not. I think oh. people are more or less scared of what this can mean in other places um, and where this can really because once again, I think their concern is if it's OK here, then is it okay in schools? Is it okay in other areas where, you know, I, I don't know. It's a, it's a hard, religion is always a tough subject to talk about. Oh, really? Believe I, it or not, it, it's guys. The, it's the biggest, the biggest, uh-huh. art, there's no right way to say it. Mm-hmm. And if you, and if you, if you try to discredit it, then you have a whole bunch of people upset with the things you say. Yeah. I mean, there's literally wars being fought about it. Um, it's, that's the reason actually, why that's, that's one of the things you're not supposed to talk about with people. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, that's normally my go-to on a first date is, um, hey, let's talk about religion and po- politics. Uh, Cam, you should take note with this uh, 37-year-old mother. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. That's um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, That's crazy. So, yeah. uh, <laughs> no, but um, regardless, um, I think that's a valid point, though, that a lot of people bring up is that I think it's very convenient that it was um, a Catholic coach and he was praying at the 50 yard line. And um, I think you do kind of sometimes you might be able to put kids in a tricky situation where they're very young and they might believe in a certain faith and they might feel excluded, I guess. Um, Yeah. I I don't know. This is um... now. Wait, now I got to ask this. Hmm. What if it was a coach of color? Because this, this, this is a uh, no. That's exactly that goes further into the point. Like, if it was it, a person a, of color, a person or... of color, a coach of color, and try to do the like. Okay, so you're saying that it's, it's okay because that's outside outside of school zone. Mm-hmm. What if it, what if it was a coach of color that tried exactly. to do the same thing? What's going to happen? Mm-hmm. What are they going to rule there? There is no way this even goes to Supreme Court, in my opinion, Cam. If it was a black Muslim man leading prayer, they would have said. They, they, would have him, they would have him arrested right there yep. on the spot. They would have been like, he's destroying our country. He's a terrorist. He's doing all these crazy things. And that guy, for the most part, has been supported. So I think that it's just a, it's an interesting double standard. And once again, I, I do, in a sense, agree with the Supreme Court's ruling. I think it's okay to lead a prayer after the game is over. Because I don't think it's really harming anyone. No, and I think the parents might have taken it a bit too far and creating this kind of storm of conversation and getting to the Supreme court is crazy in itself. But I do think it's important to understand the kind of double standard there is for people, uh, not of color that are practicing all the religions, uh, Catholics or Christians. Like that is the main kind of group here in the United States for the most part. Um, I mean, you could even tell by some of our recent decisions, a lot of oh, people yeah, follow yeah. those rulings. Um, but um, yeah, I think it's, I think if it was the other way around, there's no chance it even makes it this far. They would have just fired him and oh, he would no, be jobless. Thousand percent, thousand percent. Yeah. And that's, that's the sad part. 
it, it is really sad because it, the Constitution says freedom of religion, so it should be all religions, not not just not just your not just your Catholic, not just your like exactly what are we doing. Mm-hmm. And it's, I, I also agree with the Supreme Court ruling. I feel like with religion, like I'm not a very religious person, but um, as long as you're not imposing your religion onto somebody, it's okay. I, I have a question for for you guys very quickly before we go on to our next story. What's up? Say like you were um, playing high school sports and the coach is leading like a prayer at the 50 yard line. Would you feel like forced to go join that or would you just leave? It depends on the coach. Mm. Because, you know, that's have- where this goes into like a tricky situation. Because once again, you're not trying to force a child to partake in a religious practice that they may not believe in or don't believe in. You know I mean, what I mean? Yeah, I probably wouldn't do it because that's not really something I believe in. Mm-hmm. Um, and if they have a problem with it, then we'll they can see my lawyer. They'll probably yeah. say see my lawyer. <laughs> but yeah, it's definitely a tricky situation. And once again, Religion is always um, a very hard topic to talk amongst uh, most people. Um, okay, I'm going to go to the next story now, right? Oh, for sure, for sure. All right, so shoring up New Jersey status as a safe haven for people seeking abortions, two panels of state lawmakers on Monday approved legislation that would provide legal protection for patients fleeing states where the procedure is outlawed. Since Friday's U.S. Supreme Court ruling that struck down the 49-year-old precedent guaranteeing the right to abortion across America, 26 states have outlawed or will outlaw the procedure within the month. 24 states and Washington, D.C. have passed laws protecting abortion rights within their borders, as many expect the demand for them to increase in their respective states. The first bill, S-2642, would prohibit New Jersey from allowing a person to be extradited to another state or to be prosecuted for a crime that involves performing an abortion or any other form of reproductive health care. The other bill, S-2633, would ensure the privacy of medical records of patients who have received an abortion or other reproductive health services here in New Jersey. It would also protect the license of a medical professional in a state who provided an abortion to a person who lives in a state where the procedure is illegal. The measure also prohibits any state agencies or employees from responding to an interstate investigation or proceeding involving the pursuit of an abortion or other forms of reproductive health care. Now, all that. And before we get into like the bones of this, because for the most part, this is all really good stuff. And I think it's very great that I wish more states were obviously doing it, but having 24 plus DC step up and, you know, provide this option for people that are seeking abortions, I think is great. And I think it's a step in the right direction because clearly our federal government is going the opposite way. Um, And I truly wish more states were able to rally together. But the sad part is look at the numbers, 24 to 26, it's we're outnumbered. Um, So a lot of those states uh, get your act together because once again, uh, who's a man to tell a woman to do with their own body? Um, but very quickly, uh, I was listening to a podcast and I heard this statement and I was shocked. And I thought there's no way that's true. Well, as we're talking about Roe versus Wade being overturned for the most part, guys, uh, there's Roe is an actual person, correct or incorrect? I'd say correct. Yeah. So the Roe in Roe versus Wade uh, is having a documentary come out and she's actually passed away. Um, regardless, is in this documentary that she revealed and the Washington Post has a long article about it. She revealed that she was actually anti-abortion and she's what? always been um, anti-abortion. And that she was paid to kind of be the spokesperson for pro-abortion rights, to take on this role. And uh, that was her deathbed reveal thing is that um, I never supported, you know, anti-abortion. Wait, so, so, so she had 
she she's the namesake of the whole the whole landmark case. Yeah. But she was she was she was so against it. <laughs> Absolutely. Why, then then why did she why did she just keep doing it? I well, it's because I guess the check must have been very good according to her. Hey least. man, I guess um, so. Listen. Once again, like paying her though where'd she get this money from i imagine a 72 anti or abortion activist i would assume uh Wait. once again this is from her words uh yeah take that as you will but that's from her perspective from her own world and knowledge and that's insane that is oh. absolutely insane so the president at the time was was it nixon nixon this is a, was a Nixon was a wasn't was Floyd coming off of so so Nixon had must must have had a very nice very nice paycheck for the uh for a few people. Yeah, I mean, I guess get the back. No, I'm kidding. Um, see, that's concerning though, is when yeah, someone's able concerning. to do that uh and run wild with it and then continue to like profit off of that and not believe it at the same time. Um, and to even have the option available is absolutely insane. That's wild. That, that, that <laughs> like, I don't even know. Like, I did not know how to respond. And once again, I made sure because I didn't want to just like reveal this after just hearing on a podcast. So I did the correct thing since Google is available. I was going to say Google is free. Uh, it's not free. I got to pay bills for that. Um, but you have to research things that you hear on podcasts or on radio, even fact check us, you know, but um, I made sure I checked multiple sources and that's the lady's words. She is anti-abortion. That's wild. Yeah, man. That's um, why. Wow. I, I was just, whoa. I'm taken back by that. That's wild. Uh-huh. Well, why don't we take back to a break then, Cam, so we can recover yeah. or something. Hey, we'll I, I need to think about it. Yeah, we got yeah. a lot of things. We got a lot of things to think about. But when we return, <laughs> it's a when crazy we, world. When we return, there is even more about the crazy world that we're going to talk about, but we'll we'll get to that. So stay tuned. Doo-doo. Get in the zone. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> oh, God. Uh, thank you, Kenny. Uh, thank you for that. And welcome back to 90.3 WMSC up in Montclair. Uh, join WMSC. My name is Kenny. I'm cool. Hey, he's the reason why I'm here in this very seat. True story. <laughs> well, tell him to like stop being annoying on the radio all the time. Okay. Hey, yeah. You heard that? All right, I'm kidding, Kenny. You're great. 
Let's alarm, let's alarm I get you. What's she gonna do too? What are they gonna do to me, huh? All right, anyway. they don't want the smoke. Eddie, okay. nobody wants the smoke. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, let's get back to real news. Yeah, this this right when I saw this, I this this is crazy. Mm-hmm. So a passenger train traveling from Los Angeles to Chicago struck a dump truck and derailed Monday in a rural part of Missouri. The fatal crash killed three people and injured at least 40. Two people who died were on the train and one was in the truck. Missouri State Highway Patrol spokesperson Corporal Justin Dunn said it was not immediately clear how many people were hurt, but hospitals reported receiving more than 40 patients from the crash and were expecting more. The Southwest chief was carrying around 243 passengers and 12 crew members when the collision happened near Menden at a rural intersection on a gravel road. A total of seven cars derailed, the Highway Patrol said. A helicopter video from the site from KMBC TV in Kansas City showed rail cars on their side as emergency responders used ladders to climb up into them, into one of them. Six medical helicopters were parked nearby. We're waiting for transport patients. Close to 20 local sites, uh, close to 20 local and state law enforcement agencies, ambulances, services, fire departments, and medical helicopter services responded. And the first emergency responder responded within 20 minutes after receiving the call, he said. That's wow. This is a scary thing, especially as someone that is often using public transportation like trains especially going into the city i'm sure you guys have probably done the same thing since it's right on montclair uh and sometimes when you're on those trains you feel like oh that's kind of like uh like a bumpy area or something or you feel like oh that was like a sharp turn right there on the train hopefully it doesn't fall or anything and um to just hear this is so sad because um a lot of those people there were just i think it was a group of high schoolers were going to like a conference in Chicago or something like that. And wow. they were just trying to further their education. It was like a leadership conference or something like that. And to have it be abruptly ended like that and to have people die and people get injured from this is so scary, especially because you kind of just blindly put your trust into things like that when you're exactly. on oh, exactly. public transportation, like you kind of just set it and forget it. Same thing like when you're on a plane or you go into like an Uber, you don't really, every time you go into one, you're not really thinking, well, today it might be it. I might, might be dead or it might crash or we might run into something. You just, that doesn't really come into your mind often. And it definitely didn't for these people. And sadly, they had to go and be part of this crazy thing. Now, I'm curious to find out how exactly a dump truck was on a railway. Um, I don't know if that person was, looking to end their life or somehow they got stuck on there. Uh, that part is very confusing to me on how a dumb truck would. Well, end I'm, looking, up there. I'm looking at, I'm looking at the picture and it's just, it's so I'm, what I'm seeing is first of all, the first picture is just the train just overturned, mm-hmm. but wow, these pictures of the train is they're wild. They but are it, very, it looks like it was able to looks like what looks like one of those, uh, rail, one of the railroad crossings, like outside, how it is outside of us. Uh-huh. Or you are able to drive through. Oh, uh, okay. It might be a and crossroad. That's interesting. Maybe the thing didn't go down and he didn't know the train was coming. Possibly. I don't know. It's a very scary situation. And um, it definitely makes you think, like, as soon as I saw this story, I like, sadly, I thought about myself at first, but I was like, that's crazy to think that that could really happen at any time on any railway, really. Uh, there could just be someone crossing through. You could hit somebody. Um, you could derail and just, you know, science happens and you fall off the railway. It's yeah. scary, man. Um, the one picture I see, I see, I literally see the tra- the, tra- uh, the train wheels just mm-hmm. by themselves. That's those pictures are tough to look at, and the damage is like very bad. Yeah, I was gonna show them, but I know people died on the yeah, on the so crash so it's i think it's best that i don't but it's definitely um if you have time check out like the um some of the photos of that because i think it's important to know um what's going on but yeah that's insane and of course, if interested of course if you're yeah interested. interested obviously um 
but from Los Angeles to Chicago and you're in Missouri, man, that's, that's a tough one. That's definitely a tough. It, it's, it's, it's just heartbreaking no matter what. Mm-hmm. I'm looking at the pictures right now. It's, it's, so... it, it's yeah. just, it's just. How often do you guys use public transportation? I don't use it as much since I had, since I, since I got my car, but you know, if mm-hmm. I, if I ever need to go to the city, then of course I'm not I'm not driving. I, think this is. I I rarely use public transportation ever. You said rarely? Yeah, rarely. Um, oh wow! So I, I feel like um I guess my story is a little opposite from yours. Is that um for like majority of my probably over half I didn't have a car, so I was relying on public transportation to get to campus and um to obviously get back home and yeah. to work. Um, so using the train, it was like twice a week three times a week to um get to montclair and back um so i was you know had the new jersey transit app as well uh oh, very stellar the app is great um the reviews will say otherwise it's like a one star on apple or whatever understandable yeah yeah but um for the most part i i've had like a good experience with new jersey transit and um <laughs> Very quickly to lighten the mood, I guess. I'll give you one of my first stories. Um, coming back from Montclair. Hey, my cat is on my TV. Get off. Okay. Um, regardless, is my first time coming back from Montclair to home. I took the wrong train. And then I had to wait like two hours for the next train. Uh, oh, and it was late at night. And I was like, man, this really happened, huh? Oh, we'll, talk about, we'll talk about bad train experiences. So yeah. I, was in, I was in the city one time for a class and all of a sudden boom i gotta go because i'm not so it was, the class was, you had to be you had to go inside had to go inside a place but you had, you had to be you had to be a certain certain point so i'm like oh, yeah i'm not i'm not there yet i'm just gonna go got an uber went back to, got to penn station missed the train by a minute mm. so i'm walking around penn station and if, it's like 11 30 at night so imagine a 20 year old kid walking around Penn Station. This is fairly recent. This, this is literally, literally in February. So I walk up and down Penn Station, and I had I had people to stare stare me down. I had someone follow. It was just, I was like, yo, this is that guy get out of here. So I, I <laughs> to, saw to the, be fair, at least for you, Cam, though, is that you don't look like you're just like a 20 year old. Like you look a little bit older. Um, and you're like, you're not a small guy either. Um so I don't think anyone was just going to pull up on you like that. Um, had it been like Lana in that situation, I think oh, she, <laughs> um, she, she'd she be gone for forever. <laughs> um, no, but that's crazy, man. That's definitely like a scary place to be, especially if you're not like used to that. Like, no, I, I saw, I was like, yeah, I'm going to get out of here. Dude, Penn quick. Station is crazy sometimes. Bro, I, I saw a fight that night too. It was wild. I'm like, yo, okay. You can see anything. Okay. <laughs> like as soon as you head to New York, man. Oh, that's very true. It's like someone will yell at you for like not giving them money. Uh, you'll see just like a guy just laying in like a garbage can or okay. something. It's New York's a beautiful, but yet yeah, crazy place. But you know, the last time I went to the city um, was when I went to go see Beetlejuice with JT and Joe. Shout out shout, to them. Shout out my kids. Um, <laughs> I stuck by the two of them so close because oh, I was so scared. I was going to like. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, I, I get that. I get that. Cause... Yeah, that's fair. I love JT... New York, though. I really do. Oh, I love New York, too. Here's but here's the thing. JT's crazy and Joe is intimidating. Joe is intimidating? In what world is Joe intimidating? And the multiverse Joe is intimidating. Anyway. Hold on. We can't just move past that. You just said Joe's intimidating? Hey, Joe can be No offense to Joe. That's yo, don't make fun of Joe. I'm not making fun of him. Don't, but don't, when I don't, first don't, met Joe, don't discredit Joe's. Don't. My first response is like, oh, he's scary. <laughs> Listen, like no I, one is looking at Joe thinking he's a scary guy to be around. I accidentally one time hit on his way to his uh, ADJ test, I accidentally bopped him in the face. You accidentally socked him in the face? It was an accident, I swear. Accident, yeah. So, yeah, that happens. Anyway, Lana, <laughs> what's what's up? What, what's, what's, what's going down this week? What's happened this week in the world? Any of, intimidating uh... movies, Lana? 
Uh, I don't know if they're intimidating, but you guys remember the Despicable Me franchise? Uh, yeah. Well, they're still making more. Uh, <laughs> of course they are. <laughs> we got Minions, The Rise of Gru comes out in theaters on Friday, and it's not currently rated. In the heart of the 1970s, amid a flurry of feather hair, feathered hair and flared jeans, Gru is growing up in the suburbs, a fanboy of a supervillain supergroup known as the Vicious Six. Gru hatches a plan to become evil enough to join them. Luckily, he gets some mayhem-making backup from his loyal followers, the Minions. Together, Kevin, Stewart, Bob, and Otto, a new Minion supporting braces and a desperate need to please, deploy their skills as they and Gru build their first layer, experiment with the first, with first weapons, and pull off their first mission. Did, did he just find them on the street? Like, where does he find the Minions at? Is there like an origin story to this? Uh... <laughs> I'm did he just did, did Groot is like, oh, hey, come on, come on, you pe- come on, you little people, let's go. Ridiculous. Like this w- is absurd. Did, did he just find them off the street and say, yeah, let's let's go rule the world. They have names. <laughs> How do you even <laughs> tell the difference? I don't um, know. I thought they were just all like the same person or thing. You know, some of them have like you tell by like like their height and like their different eyes. That's ridiculous. Have, no, that's we're not we're not doing like, this. To no. know. There's like, what are we doing, minions? Like, we we're done. I thought I, we were done. Yo, know, I'm not off the fact that this is t- that this this is this is the uh, a boy from the suburbs that grew up in the '70s. Yeah, I bro mean, woke- at least he's got feathered hair and a flared jeans. Bro woke up, said so. All right, I'm feeling evil today. Mm-hmm. Bro, hey, literally I mean, wo- woke up and chose violence. Literally woke up and chose violence. The '70s was a funky time, man. Oh, it was, it was funky. Yep, a I lot mean, of serial is, killers. That's very that was very true. Forgot about that. Minions are DreamWorks cash cow. They're gonna keep oh, they're gonna milk get it. as much money as they can. Uh, they're, they're gonna keep on milking. I can't wait until it's like minions versus zombies for the Halloween <laughs> special. <laughs> minions oh, versus fast 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 and minions. Uh, well, don't give up don't give them ideas, Cam. Do not give them ideas. It's gonna be Vin Diesel <laughs> the minions. as the main villain. It's gonna be absurd. Uh, it's all it's all off family that one. I feel like they're all movies too. Movies. Like they have like their own prequel movies. It's weird. Just really crazy. Why is it not rated? It is like is it supposed to be rated R? Like is it like rated R minions? That's like valid. what is going on? See, that would be interesting if it was like rated R <laughs> minions. That'd yeah, be I, like how do we get there? <laughs> like <I'd be> what? <laughs> they start cursing and everything. It's they like, got whoa. So like a HBO type show with with the minions. I'm like, what is happening? This don't feel safe for the children. Oh no. What All else right, we well, got? What's, what's next? Uh, Beauty comes out on Netflix. It is rated That's R you. on Wednesday. That's you. A gift. Me. Yeah, your beauty. Anyway. Oh, thanks. A gifted young black woman struggles to maintain her voice and identity after she's offered a lucrative recording contract setting off a fierce battle between her family, the label, and her closest friends to determine who will guide her as she makes through the journey to become a star. Now, I actually have a story about this. Um, they were filming this movie in Patterson, and when they were first location scouting, they actually came to my house because they wanted to use my house for the film. They didn't actually end up using it, sadly, because the equipment couldn't all fit in there, but that's cool. That's fire. That's fire. See, that was more cool than that generic script you just read. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. I mean, listen, I'm all for, um, you know, stories from different perspectives and it, it being a young black woman is incredible. But that is the most generic script and concept that I have ever heard for a singing yeah. movie in my life. I agree with that. Like, I agree. Not, not, like if you read just like before uh like say like black woman wasn't a part of that it's just like a young woman struggles to maintain like what are we doing man like we've 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 been seeing this we've like this has happened like how many times yeah. we got to see the same thing i, I don't know man. beauty <laughs> this is an l for me this, this is a big l i would i think i would go i would see it only because of the possibility my house is possibly going to be on it you think so, like the whole time you're gonna be like, it should have been me. <laughs> it should have. It's not fair. <laughs> oh, I wish, but 
Hey, they got to do what they got to do. I actually got a sound effect for that. Mm-hmm. Actually, it's on my phone. I'm actually not going to play it, so. Mo- moment pass. Okay. Um, the moment's done. Yeah. Finally, we have The Princess, which is coming out on Hulu on Friday and is rated R. A beautiful, strong-willed princess refuses to wed the cruel sociopath to whom she is betrothed and is kidnapped and locked in a remote tower of her father's castle. With her scorned, vindictive suitor intent on taking her father's throne, the princess must protect her family and save the kingdom. What? I keep seeing ads for this, and I don't know why. That sounds that sounds crazy. What? I'm not gonna lie. This one makes beauty sound like an original idea because once again, princess <laughs> luck in a castle, and then someone's gotta save her. I mean, c- come on, man. Oh no, I get that, but at the same time, this come is come on, bro. This is this is her being kidnapped, locked up. But is, that's is it by, happened, man. No, is, is is it by the sociopath though? Is it by that? Is it by that guy? Yes, most of them are. Yeah. You think they're just locking her up for like fun? Uh, well, yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, oh, we're getting into weird territories now. <laughs> um, I mean, listen. <laughs> if I mean, a fan it's of Billy King. She's in this movie. Yeah, I'm trying to look at the cast. I mean, they got some relatively um, newer names. It seems. Um, it seems like they have a pretty diverse cast as well, which uh, you know I'm, I'm for that as well. Shout out to Hulu and Netflix for up in their diversity game. Oh, W's, W's. Uh, I like, I like regardless, I don't know. I think I'm going to have to check out the trailer to see if it really is just like, I think, how if it, it sounds. If, um, if it hits like that. Yeah, but on paper. From what, remember, from what I remember from seeing from the trailer, because I don't know why I keep getting ads for this movie. It's, it is also a bit of an action movie. Like, the princess does fight people. Oh, so she's the one fighting. No one's saving. Her. I think so. Like, okay, think that's, that's, that's a little cooler. Yeah, that that's that that's also that sounds boss. Oh, okay. See, I've uh, uh, understood it as someone was saving her kind of thing. No. Um, eh, that's pretty cool. I rock with it now. I rock. I, I've switched sides. Shout out to the princess. Mm. Lana, what's next? All mm. right. So in the games. Um, if you remember struggling with Cuphead, well, we'll shout get out Joe. One. <laughs> hey, Joe. Shout out, shout out Joe. Joe's got all the shout outs. <laughs> He's the-, the most intimidating man in <laughs> Montclair State. Yeah. Cuphead, the delicious last course, comes out Thursday for PS4, Switch, PC, and Xbox One. Joe, Joe, well, yo, during the spring semester, Joe will be sitting in the office just playing Cuphead, just trying to beat it. I don't know if he. Be, I don't know if he did it. I. I don't know. I have not asked him since, but he's he's been trying to beat Cuphead for a minute. I'm gonna tell him about this if he doesn't know about it already. I mean, I gotta be honest. There is no way I'm gonna continue to play in a game that could frustrate me that often. That game just seems very annoying. It seems life ruining, and I'm gonna pass on that. It might take years off your life anyway. Yeah. I really lost a day playing that game. I, I was so frustrated with it. It's just not worth it, man. I'll play Mario. What's Mario. next? Uh, we got MX versus ATV Legends, which comes out today for PS5, PS4, PC, and Xbox Series XS. Wow. I awesome. love ATVs. <laughs> you know, almost, I, play, I played that game way back in the day, to be fair. MX versus ATV Legends? No, MX versus ATV. Oh, oh, that's an actual series. See, the more you know. Like way back in the day, because I, I thought that was probably the coolest thing ever. But no, it is what it is. It sounds ridiculous. Hey. Um, hey, Lana, that was great. Okay. <laughs> Cam, you want to start off our next set of stories? Yeah, we're not playing music. That's cool. All right, bet. Uh, I ain't gonna lie to you, but you mad ugly. That's mean. Oh, let me explain why. <laughs> let, let me let, let me explain why. Let me explain why. That is probably what that was probably was said to this four-legged creature. A Chinese crested chihuahua mix named Happy Face, Mr. Happy Face, by the way, was crowned the world's ugliest dog at the annual pageant in California. 
The dog was recently adopted in August 2021 by an Arizona woman, Jan- uh, Janae Bainley. Mr. Happy Face is a young 17-year-old dog. with, And with this award, there is no doubt the first he's a first ballot dog hall of famer dog of famer by the way dog of famer the annual event at the sonia uh marin fairground event center returned this year after 2020 and 2020 contestants were canceled due to the, the panorama going on the contest is aimed at promoting dog adoptions that some might consider to be less than aesthetically pleasing Vainly received a reward of a thousand dollars and a trip to New York to appear on NBC's Today Show. Bailey said she immediately fell in love with Mr. Happy Face, despite being told he might not have long to live due to his advanced age and multiple health issues. Janae uh, Janea Bailey recalled her first meeting the ugly dog. "Quotes: He was the happiest creature that I have ever met. He hobbled up to me and chose me. I vowed that day he would be so loved that he would not remember how awful his previous life had been." That's adorable. That is the award-winning ugliest dog. That's that's still <laughs> that he's 17? Yeah, I mean he looks 17. His he face does, but not his face does but not, he like this like this big. Nah, bro, that's a 17-year-old Chihuahua. Like everything makes sense about that dog. Bro, yo, bro is time. Oh, never mind. Never mind. I'm seeing. I've seen more pictures now. Yeah. Yeah, bro. Yeah. Bro's walking around like a bulldog. Yeah. <laughs> He's walking around like a bulldog. That's wild. Yeah. Imagine being called the world's ugliest anything. That's that's impressive. Listen, it's hard for me. I'm I'm the world's most beautiful uh, sports uh, sports director. So. Rumor has it, Cam. Um, great amongst the 38 and over club. Uh, we appreciate the work you do for um, for all for all the step moms out there. Um, hey, round hey. of applause for that's see that's a future Hall of Famer right there too. Um, first ballot, first ballot. Listen, this is um, you know I'm glad that they uh, were able to spin it in a positive direction though, oh, and that's that's awesome. uh, support just like adoption for all kinds of dogs, regardless of like age or health or whatever is going on within those dogs, because they deserve a nice home. And I'm glad that Mr. Happy Face, despite being 17, was able to find its, I'm assuming, last home before, you know, nature takes its course. And um, hopefully Mr. Happy Face is enjoying life right now. Oh, he's, he's, a, he's, a cha- he's a championship winning dog. Yeah. First ballot <laughs> dog of famer. Exactly. And like, it seems like his, his owner really likes him and loves mm-hmm. him and wants to like, take care of him. So I think he's going to have a good retirement here. Yeah, Very hey, good round of applause for the dog right there. Um, shout out to being ugly. I can't relate to it. Not, not me. Shout out to being ugly. I don't, I don't, um, I don't think, I don't think, I don't think this buzz can. Actually, I don't think WMC, I don't think anyone from WMC can relate to it being ugly. But you know, it's cool. Well, except that one person. Except that, except that one person. Hey, Kyle's not listening right now. No, I get to know. Like, see, now everyone's gonna speculate who's the ugly one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, I like chaos, Cam. Love oh, chaos. No. So, yeah. so does Kyle. Miss you, Kyle. Oh, shout out to Kyle. R.I.P. No, he's not actually dead. Yeah, Anyways, but, uh, Tuesday, but let's anyway. talk about something that we can either crave or put in the grave. What's as a, that? Yeah, as a New Jersey classic uh, is making a return for the most part. As nothing is more synonymous with the Garden State than Taylor Ham. Poor yes, poor. sir. The good old slab of pork Taylor accompanied ham. with an egg cheese and potentially on a roll or bagel uh very quickly what kind of bagel you guys rock with i, I rock with everything everything i i like everything too it depends on how i'm feeling that day though i'll go uh, plain okay. sometimes too mm. all right well what if you want a slice of bread yeah, we could we could do that for you we could do it for you hey what? We, can't sh- we can't shame on that man respectful I've, I've hey i've been at times get that dollar slice bread which not a dollar anymore because <laughs> things are skyrocketing. Um, the dollar store is a dollar twenty-five. Sad face. Yes, sir. Uh, maybe even a tortilla. Bad. Hey, listen. People even put tortilla, like make wraps with, with Taylor ham, egg and cheese. That sounds that's valid, cool. That's, that's, that's cool. Sounds, that sounds valid. That's fair. But get this, man. What if we put Taylor ham, egg and cheese on a donut? That's blasphemous. I don't believe uh, it. It's blasphemous. 
I don't that think that would very good. That's irrehensible. That's it is downright communist, terroristic. I don't know how, how else to describe this disgusting sack of food that this company is serving. Regardless, <laughs> top <laughs> that, Donuts in Rutherford recently started serving breakfast sandwiches and spiced things up by putting the classic oh breakfast God. item between the <laughs> two of the shops, vanilla cake donuts. While Taylor ham on a donut isn't often found, using donuts as a bun for a sandwich isn't exactly a new concept because people like sweet and savory. Regardless, things like the McGriddle exist. French toast bagels be hitting from time to time. And as a former sandwich making employee, people love to put jelly on their breakfast sandwiches. Yep. Now, the sandwich is currently available on the weekends with the classic vanilla cake donuts, but the manager says she hopes to eventually expand it to the menu during the week and offer it on different types of donuts. Top that donuts range from classic like plain glaze and cinnamon sugar to Snickers, Rudy Pebbles, s'mores, and chocolate peanut butter. I might talk, I might talk some of these donuts. I'm not going to lie. I'm, I'm looking at the picture of it right now. I can't describe this. There's cheese on the donut. I'm not okay with yeah. it. Yeah. Hey, listen, 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 listen. It, it, I, it doesn't look like a donut. I'm not going to lie. Uh, No, it looks more like a croissant. Like if you took like yeah. a very quick yeah. glance at it. Like it does. I wouldn't because you don't see the hole, obviously, um, from the mm-hmm. top. So I would imagine from the side, it'd be like, oh, it's like a croissant. It, it does look like a croissant, but we know it's a donut. Yeah, it's, it's definitely a donut. Uh, so I'm going to share for the people on Facebook and YouTube. Uh, would you guys ever try this? Yes. Yeah? Yes. Uh, mm. Yes. I wouldn't, Lana. Buy, I wouldn't buy it myself. Um, but if someone bought it and asked me, hey, do you want to try a bite? I would maybe take a bite. Okay. Here's my thing. Um, <laughs> what I, I'm going to try anything at least once for the most part. As long as you're not giving me like dog meat like i'm gonna try it most likely uh this is something that piques my interest just because you know people it's a, really it's just, like it's, the sweet and savory it it's just so it just sounds awesome yeah and it sounds just like something you want to try you know it's definitely not a sandwich that i would mentally or physically be able to finish just because i don't think my body would allow that much negativity inside it at the same time um now if i had like a donut in the morning like a breakfast sandwich at nighttime my body could do it but just eating that it, it just seems wrong crazy. yeah so i think at some point next semester in the fall we have to find a find a possibility of doing this whether we have to make it from our own bootleg version and then try okay. it on the show, cut it into like four so everyone can have a piece. Or we just go right there. We just go right to Rutherford. That's true. Rutherford is Rutherford close? No, Rutherford's like it's 20 minutes. Close. Like 20, 20 oh, okay. Minutes. That's cool. Okay. No, but I feel like this is definitely something <laughs> that I, I have to. Oh, we got to do it. It has to be tried, you know, just so I can like know what it tastes like. But yeah, it doesn't It doesn't sound good to me, especially it, it, if they're yeah. planning on expanding it to different uh, on types paper, of donuts. Like, on, imagine. Oh, listen, uh, yeah. A fruity pebble donut with cheese on it. Oh, that, that seems so that's, wrong. You know, that's that egregious. <laughs> Peanut, but that's egregious <laughs> eatery right there. Wow. This story has got Cam using like super SAT words right now with egregious. And what was the first one you did? Oh, uh, man, I forgot. A uh, diabolical. Yeah, ah, sure. Yeah, I don't breather. know, man. I'm a breather. Just the concept of just having Taylor Ham touch Fruity Pebbles seems so absurd and Listen, just so wrong on it's so many that. levels. It's just cheese. The cheese, the melted cheese on top of a donut yeah. just sounds crazy. That sounds... Ugh. Ugh. Well... I mean, well. very quickly, though, because I don't think we have enough time for another story. Probably not. Uh, For breakfast sandwiches in general, what do you guys normally order? I love me a croissant. Give me, give me, I need, I need eggs, cheese, either sauce, any, any type of meat, and uh, put it, put it on a croissant. I'll eat mm. it up because that, that just chef's so, kiss. What about uh, you, Lana? Um, I'm usually go for a sausage, egg, and cheese on a plain bagel, but I'll mix it up with a croissant or a English muffin every now and again. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, for me. 
Uh, I, well, personally, like if I'm at home, I really, and this might be like very, a lot of people don't really rock with it the same way I rock with it. It might be like a island kind of thing, but spam egg and cheese, bro, on just like spam. anything, man. I love spam. Put spam with rice. I, put I, spam I on just, bread. I think it's not them because I have uh, my my um my brother in law. He loves spam. Dude, he's, spam he, is so good. He's from Jamaica, so. especially if you get it crispy, bro. Like if you uh, like, yeah, you can't have spam with just a little bit of brown. If you have spam, no. you gotta darken that thing. Get it nice and crispy, nice and toasty with an egg and cheese on ninety point three WMSCF from Montclair. That is an elite sandwich right there. That's a that's Val eats. Mm-hmm. Sound, what does spam taste like? I've never had it. I don't know. Never had, here's the thing. My thing is like most people that end up trying spam like later in their life don't like it because it, it's, it's an like, acquired taste. It's an acquired. It's very taste. acquired. It's like salty, very salty, and it's a mixture of God knows what. It's pork, yeah. apparently. Secret. I can't confirm it. Regardless, uh, I love it. Is it healthy for you? Absolutely not. So Zero. But it tastes delicious. I like it. I know a lot of people don't rock with it the same way I rock with it. Well, we would have all right, so boom, coming up right now. What's but happening? I, I have to go argue a wall. Mm. I have to go march down to the bookstore and fight for this thing. If they're even open, Cam. Yeah, you are correct. Oh, yeah. So how how about this? How about I have an hour of all right, so boom, mm-hmm. and then I'll go. Actually, we'll see because it might take it might take a while. Just go get the book done, man. I'm gonna go. go arg- I'm gonna go argue with the bookstore. Argue. Yeah. Take care of coach's playbook later on in the day. Uh, all right, so boom, we'll survive next week. Uh, it's been the morning buzz, everybody. Yeah. This is people by world. See you guys next week. Actually, you'll see Isaiah later on the week, and you'll see Laura tomorrow. So, and stay tuned, especially because we got two, we got uh, tunes on Tuesday. So, a whole lot of things coming this way. So, uh, bye, world.